Well, hello everyone. Welcome again to my basement slash workshop slash man cave. I know it's really dirty and messy. Today, we're not gonna be doing anything Tesla related, so I apologize if you come to the video and you're expecting something Tesla. Maybe in the next video, I, I promise. Uh, today, we're just gonna do a little bit of a continuation of what I talked about in my last video, which was my computer. Today, we're gonna to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart. I've been an IT guy for the last 30 years. Talk about my Synology. Let me just back you up here just a little bit. There you go. So yes, this is my Synology. This is a uh, server and it runs a whole pile of things in my house. It takes care of my time machine backups for my computers. It, uh, it's our Plex server. It's a VPN. It handles Bitwarden for our, uh, our password management system. Anyways, it does a lot of things, but uh, just like anything else in the world, sometimes you chase that dragon's tail of storage. And even though I have 20 terabytes in here, I need just a little bit more. So I just got one of these. This is the Synology DX517, which is, put that down, <laughs> it's an expansion bay. This unit actually will support up to two of these, so I have lots of future expansions. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna unpack this today. I'm gonna show you how to set it up. So if you have one of these, or you're looking at one of these units, this is a, a great unit. Now Synology, just so you know, make a variety of different units. Not all of them are as big as this one. This uh, is a DS1819 Plus. I've had this for a couple of years. Fantastic unit. I had a smaller one to begin with, but as with anything, you expand, you need more storage. So I got this one here a couple years ago. It's been really great, but it's time to expand it. So uh, yeah, I got uh, a six terabyte hard drive here. Obviously, <laughs> we'll explain a little bit more how this works. I have another six terabyte that actually got sent in for warranty because it failed on this unit. So I had a spare one. So that's in here. I got another spare one. And then I have, uh, well, the one that's coming back from warranty. So obviously that'll go in here. And if you watched my last video, you saw that I have a Drobo. Well, guess what? The day after I did that whole setup, the Drobo died. Hard drives are still okay, but the box is bad. I don't care, data's backed up. So we're gonna transfer the hard drives from that into this, and I'll show you the process. Yeah, I did mention that my workbench was a little bit messy. So maybe we can move Mr. Cybertruck out of the way. And maybe the bike batteries. Yes, electric bikes, so we always have lots of batteries. All right, let's unpack this. Yes, I promise I will clean up my workbench someday, but not today. Let's open this box up and see what we have. All right, accessories, probably power cables and the like in here. Yeah, that's what I expected. Power cable, keys for the hard drives, some screws, but actually we won't need these because Synology has a very slick system of mounting hard drives in their system. Let's just pull it out of the box. So on the bottom, they've taped an eSATA cable. Now, as I mentioned before, the 18, uh, 19 plus that I have has two ports for expansion. So in the future, I can add a, another one of these units. Now, some of you are probably wondering, well, why don't you just upgrade the hard drives? And yes, I can do that. However, I haven't entirely decided how I'm actually going to use this unit. I may actually end up setting it up in such a way that it actually becomes a, a backup and not necessarily expand the storage. I can change my mind in the future, but I have a feeling that's what I'm going to do right now. So it's just a black box and you have five drives in the front and very basic connections. Um, I should mention that this is a dummy unit in the sense that it has no brains in it. All of the work is actually being done by the primary Synology. This is basically known as a JBOD or just a bunch of disks. And each one of them just goes into these little drive caddies, which you slide out. And what's really cool about these is that you don't need any screws. You just pull out these little plastic tabs, like so, hard drive slides in, and these tabs act as, as the screws. So super slick. Now, of course, if you want permanent mounting, I mean, you can use the screws, but I never do. So let's pull out all the drive caddies. Let's see if we can put some hard drives in this puppy. So as I mentioned, I have this uh, six terabyte drive. Brand spanking new. So let's just install, install this by pulling off the two rails. You take your drive, and of course the connector's gotta go in that way. So you just slide it in like so, like so, and you're done. Move these caddies out of the way. Slide that guy in, locks into position. Of course you can use the keys here to lock that so nobody can come along and just pop it out deactivate the system, so we'll just do that. Let me grab the other hard drives from the uh, dead Drobo, and uh, we'll put them into this unit. I have that other six terabyte drive, so actually what I'm gonna do is uh, probably gonna leave this one empty for now. 
So when I get that, I'll put it in and then I'll put the uh, rest of the hard drives in here. This is my old Drobo and by old, I mean old because the only connection on the back is USB 2, eSATA and <laughs> Firewire 800. Yeah, it's, it's pretty old, but I really don't care because it was just as a time machine backup anyway. So let's just pull out the drives in this puppy and see what we have. Hard drives are still good, just the units died. So let's see here. There's a four terabyte Western Digital. Got a two terabyte. I got an old one terabyte. Let's see here, got another one terabyte. And this one is stuck for some reason, I don't know why. Probably an old one terabyte as well. 200, no, two terabyte. <sighs> Whew, dusty, wow. Sorry about that. All right, so I think we'll retire the uh, <laughs> smallest of the two. So we have three drives. I'm keeping that one as a spare for the six. So I got two, 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 and four. So another eight terabytes, six, 12. Anyways, it'll be enough for a backup. So let's uh, let's start with that. Uh, I don't tend to label these things, but uh, just by memory, what I like to do is just uh, put these drives in, in the order of size. So, you know, that's gonna be a six. So we'll put the four there and the two twos in here. And just like anything else, you just put the rails on. And you just click in, super easy, super fast. There we go. Uh, this is the newer one of the two, so we'll put that one ne next. Now, one of the reasons I like Synologies a lot is because they have data protection. If you're the type of person, and as I said, I've been in the IT business for 30 years, I've seen data failures. It's because people do stupid things like trust their data to a single hard drive. Very, very bad thing, never do that. So one of the reasons I like these units is because they offer data redundancy. And by data redundancy, I mean multiple hard drives formatted in such a way that they will tolerate a certain number of drives failing. Now, depending on how you configure these units, uh, it'll tolerate anywhere from one to two drives failing, or sometimes even more on more sophisticated setups. In my case, I have it set as um, RAID 6. RAID 5 is typically what you wanna use which will tolerate one drive failing. RAID 6 will tolerate two. I value my data. By the way, Synology also has something called SHR or SHR2, Synology Hybrid RAID. And what's really nice about Hybrid RAID, and I should actually go back and correct myself, I actually use SHR2. Um, the reason for that is because you can mix and match drive sizes. Typically with RAID 5 or 6, you can't mix and match drive sizes. It'll actually go to the lowest common denominator. Uh, the nice thing about this is you can mix and match your drive sizes. You can upgrade the drives as you see fit and just keep upgrading. And it does offer you a RAID 5 or RAID 6 like function where you can designate one or two drive failures. You can even set up a drive or more as hot spares. So if one of them dies for whatever reason, if you have a spare when you're not being used, it'll just go in and rebuild the RAID. Well, as you can see, it didn't take very long to do that setup at all. Uh, it's time to plug it in, but I'm going to be on the safe side. You probably don't have to do this, but I'm actually going to shut this down. I can actually do it right from my phone. I just sign into the Synology account. We'll tap uh, shut down. It'll say, are you sure? Yes. And it's actually shutting down. Take a couple minutes. Once the lights are off, then we can uh, plug everything in and fire it back up. So now that the unit's been shut down, I can actually plug in my data cable. Yes, I know that my system is very messy. One of these days, I will clean it up. All right, let's plug this in. Only goes in one way. I'll set this unit up here. It only has one connection. Okay, so there's that. And then power cable. And I'll sit like that, I guess. That's pretty good. I'll put this back up here. That's my uh, Wi-Fi and my home automation system there for my Kia. Those are the antenna for it. Power that on. Uh, remember, because this is the brains of the system, I wanna power this one on first. And I guess we're probably okay to press that one and wait for that to power up. And since we're waiting for everything to spin up, boot up, I might as well lock these drives. Use this little key here to uh, lock it in position like that so you can't pull out the drive anymore. I'll leave that one open again because that's where my other drive is going to come. And we'll just lock all those. These are all locked as well. It was a time over 20 years ago, I actually operated almost an ISP in my basement. I had a big rack, lots of server gear and stuff, and uh, boy, you should have seen my electricity bill. <laughs> 
The nice thing about this stuff is uh, it's it's very light on the power situation. So actually, before we actually do the setup, let me tell you a little bit how I have this connected to my network. Uh, the back of the Synology, which is the brains of the unit, has four Ethernet ports, and I actually have them link aggregated, which means I've taken two of the ports, put them into my switch, bonded them together, so that doubles the theoretical throughput. There is an option in this unit where you can put an expansion card in it, so you can get a 10 gigabit situation for your network, but most of my network here is actually Wi-Fi, except for my MacBook Pro, I need the speed to get you know, at the data for the videos. So I actually run that into um, a switch. So in this case here in my Synology, I actually have um, an SSD card in there, which actually has two NVMe uh, caching chips in there. So I think I have about a terabyte worth of uh, caching on there. So that really greatly increases the throughput of saving and restoring data um, and retrieving data from here from the Synology. So there's only one card slot, so I, it was a choice. It was either speed uh, on the network side of things or speed on the hard drive speed, and I'd rather have it on the hard drive side of things. So anyway, so that's what I have in there. And again, like I said, this is uh, a dumb unit. It's just for expansion, and I have room for a second one. So it looks like it's fully booted up, and the LAN lights are flashing, so let's hold over to the computer and uh, configure this thing. So now that the server has been booted up, I'm just gonna go to the administration screen. In my case, I just type in the IP address. We're gonna sign in. And this is what the screen looks like. So the first thing I wanna do here is go and look at the storage manager. I have it here on my desktop. You can also access it here from the menu. Now we'll just wait for this to load up. So you can currently see here, this is my current volume. I only have one volume in here. We'll talk about that here in a second. There's my SSD caches that I mentioned, and they're just kinda of chooching along here. Here's a list of hard drives. So I've got all these uh, eight drives populated here in the Synology, the two cache drives. And lo and behold, there it is, DX517 with four drives currently loaded. Drive number two will be coming here once I receive my six terabyte drive replacement. I have to make a decision at this point. Do I add these drives to the current existing storage pool here, which is uh, almost 19 terabytes worth of data, or do I create a second volume to act as a backup. I think for now, for testing purposes, at least initially, I'm gonna set this up as a second um, storage pool. Uh, matter of fact, I have the current storage pool located right now. If I add a drive to it, for some reason, and I check this out here, it only shows me three drives. I can't add any more, even though I have four, potentially five drives in this unit. So I, I have to make a decision at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to create a new storage pool for this. So we'll create, create and I have a choice, better performance or higher flexibility. I like the higher flexibility personally, and because I have the SSD cache, it more than makes up for the difference on the better performance. And I'm gonna pick SHR2, which is a uh, minimum number of drives per RAID is four. I have uh, four drives in the unit now. Later on, when I get the other drive, I'll expand it, or I can set it as a hot spare. Uh, we'll leave this here empty. Here's the part where I get to pick all the drives. So I have uh, one, two, three, four drives in the DX517 and uh, not listed in the compatibility list. Yeah, 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 I don't care. I understand that the power expansions, that's fine. There's no data on these drives because like I said, I just wiped it. So I'm gonna hit apply. And this is gonna create the storage pool. Now what the Synology is going to do is going to start using um, those drives almost immediately, but they're in a degraded capacity at the moment because it is doing a data scrubbing. And that data scrubbing takes, um, well, it can take several days in this case here. There we go, we got a storage pool right now, as it says right now, it's uh, verifying the drives and it can take a while. I should mention the way that the Synology works is that you have multiple hard drives, they're put into a storage pool, which is a combination of drives formatted together in such a way. And then on top of that, you can create a volume and this volume can be well, whatever you want it to be. In this case here, I just use all the drives into a singular volume, but now I'm actually gonna create a second volume. So I'm gonna use the second uh, storage pool that I just created. Total capacity is gonna be 3.63 terabytes. Now, you're probably asking yourself, you put more drives in there than, and their higher capacity, why is it showing this? Well, uh, this is part of the SHR system or even a RAID is that um, there's a certain amount of data storage that has to be set aside for the redundancy in the case of a failure. It has to be able to reconstruct the data should one of the drives fail. So you lose about 25% of your storage based on that. So we're just gonna click okay. By default, you wanna use the BTRFS. Uh, there is old EXT4, but this is a better one because this is a, uh, it's almost like a ZFS type system. It gives you lots of really cool things like snapshots, which is an awesome way of um, data protection. So now you have to give it a, a name. Um, let me call this, uh, I'm just gonna call this one backup for now. 
we are going to select the maximum amount of storage and I can uh, once I get the other drive I can put it into the storage spool and expand this volume so that it gets bigger and we'll just hit apply and lo and behold we have a second volume so if I just minimize this or if I go to my file station for a second let's see I have to create a, uh, a shared folder so let's let's create a shared folder and I get to pick which volume I want it to be on here I'll just call this backup for example yeah do we want a recycle bin on that Yeah, that's fine just click OK. Do we want to encrypt it? Not now. Uh, do we want data checksum? Yes, I like that. This is an extra feature of BTRFS, which is really quite nice. Uh, do we want compression? Yeah, sure, that's that's a good thing. Like I said, it's a backup at this point. Uh, it's not going to be for live data in any given time. And do we want uh, quotas? No, I'm just going to kind of leave that alone. We'll just hit apply. And at this point, I have to give uh, rewrite access to different people here. I have an admin account. This is for demonstration purposes. Never have an admin account on your system. We're just using this for demos right now. So I'll just kind of lead that like that. And then you can see here we have a new share called backup. So if I go to my Mac and I connect to that server, there's the folder right there. And I can jump files on it and I can just take a bunch of stuff and just kind of stick it on there. Don't care. There they are. And if I go to my file manager over here, there's the files. And if I delete them, I can do it from here too. delete. Bye bye, they're gone. As I mentioned before, I think I'm actually going to use this as a backup. So what I'm going to do here is go under the uh, replication manager here, which is a really great feature. Uh, it allows me to take snapshots of whatever I want. Uh, this is part of the feature of BTRFS. So God forbid something comes along, somebody comes in, deletes my system, whatever the case may be, I can recover things very quickly. So in this case here, I'll just um, do the backup thing and I'll just hit a, sa a snapshot. I'll just record this every day. Um, do a custom retention policy, let's say 12 hours, one weekly snapshot, daily, one daily snapshot for one week. That's okay. And there we go. We're totally protected. I can run a snapshot anytime I want. That way is if somebody was to encrypt something or delete a file by mistake. Matter of fact, let me just show you how this works. Let me just put some files on here. Okay, so we have some files. I'm going to take a snapshot. Boop, just like this. I'll just call this initial. It's like a backup within a backup. There, it's been backed up. It's currently processing. Probably going to take a little longer here at this point because... Oh, no, that was quick. All right. So now I've made a mistake. I go in here and I delete these files. Watch this. Okay, so now they're gone off the Mac. I go to the file station. Oh, no, they're empty. Well, what do I do? Well, I can recover it. <laughs> I go to snapshot replication. Backup and do recovery and click recover. I can pick um, what snapshot I took. Uh, this is this the first one. And I can just say restore to this snapshot. Take a snapshot before restoring. Yeah, I don't care at this point. Click OK. Did that work? Yeah, there they are. Why are they not showing up in here? Probably because I have to eject the drive and then get it to come back up again. Sure enough, there they are. There's the files. So, yeah. But what I want to do here is actually set this up as a, an actual backup. So I'm going to use the Hyper Backup application in here to backup my data to the uh, DX517. So we're going to go in here. We're going to put that into that um, folder here because this, there's asking for the destination share. So I'm going to stick in that folder. And uh, what do we want to back up? Well, let's, um, let's see here. Let's back up my files. File server. Well, we'll back up the whole thing. What the heck? Hopefully, I have enough storage. Probably okay. And uh, what do we want to back up? Is there anything else in there in the system? Now, you know, I just really care about the files at this particular po point. We'll just call this um, initial backup task notification. Compress the backup. When do I want it to back up? 3 a.m. Actually, I have processes running at 3 a.m. to back up the website, so maybe I'll set that at about 5 a.m. Uh, integrity check. Yes, that's good. And uh, do we want to do a rotation? Yep. Mm, how many do I want to keep? Maybe five or something like that. That's probably good enough. Maybe seven, actually. Let's do it seven. Apply. It's actually done. It's actually starting the backup right now as we speak, so I'm just going to let that go. Backup now? Sure. I can minimize that. 
All right, so there you go. The system is working. Like I said, if we go into the storage manager here, the uh, storage pool is still scrubbing. This is going to take some time. So right now it's operating in degraded mode. But once it's done, it'll be uh, operational. And once I get that six terabyte drive, I'll just stick it in here. And what I'll end up doing here is just uh, going into the storage pool. And I can't do it right now, <laughs> but I'll be able to add a drive to that later once the uh, scrubbing is done and uh, we'll get more data storage. So that's pretty much a tour of uh, doing an installation of a DX517 on a Synology. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. See you guys.